Irvin, let me start with you. Has any prophetic utterance or revelation come to you directly from the Lord or from someone that you know to be a true prophet of the Lord that would give us a little clue as to where we are on the timeline? I believe I have an understanding. I don't, I wouldn't call it a prophetic utterance, but I do believe mm -hmm. God opened my understanding. I'm teaching a lesson right now called This Generation Shall Not Pass. Good. And what I did, you know, when Jesus said that, I looked at all the signs he gave, and a lot of them are very general wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes. Well, there's always wars. There's always rumors of wars. Sure. There's always earthquakes. So I was looking for any specific signs. Mm -hmm. When those happen, you can, strive, uh, you can drive a stake in the ground and say, yes, okay, sir. this generation that sees this was what Jesus was talking about. Right. I found two things. They're not general signs. They are specific one-time events. One, verse 15, the abomination of desolation. When you see the abomination of desolation, then that's one of the signs that Jesus said, the generation that sees these things shall not pass. The other thing is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, for me, what is that? What is the abomination of, of yes. whatever you said? Well, Jesus said there yeah. in that passage, <laughs> Jesus said there in that passage that the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet would stand in the holy place. So it's going to happen on the Temple Mount. The Apostle Paul gave a detailed account of it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So don't we have to have a temple built first? Yes, we do. Okay, yeah, so absolutely. it and ain't I agree, happening I agree tomorrow with then because uh, we don't have that temple yet, yeah. do we? we? We don't have, so it can't happen tomorrow. Yeah. It cannot. But it cannot happen tomorrow. Okay. Okay, but... Because right. <laughs> I have a lot to do tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> I mean... Let, let me finish the one scripture. We have Christmas shop. Come on. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but Second Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul gave the detailed description of the abomination of desolation. He said that the Antichrist would be revealed, the son of perdition, who exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, claiming to be God. Wow. So the Antichrist is going to stand on the Temple Mount and say, I'm the ultimate authority here, which they're trying to get done. That's the way they're going to solve the Temple Mount problem. Yeah. So in answer to your question, Paul, there are two things, the abomination of desolation and there is... Then the very next verse says, when you see that event, then those in Judea will have to flee. flee yes. Well, there's 550,000 Jews living in the occupied territories, which is Judea. Israel had Israel prior to the 67 war, but they captured Judea in the 67 war. Mm -hmm. Now the world community says, you have to give it back. Yeah. But they got 550,000 Jews they don't know what to do with. They moved 9,000 out of Gaza and nearly had a civil war over right, it. Right. They say, we can't move 550,000. It'll cause, it'll split Israel. Mm -hmm. So here's what they've come up with. The prime minister of the Palestinians, Salam Fayyad, said, you don't have to leave. We'll respect your property rights. We have a million Palestinians living in Israel under Israeli government. You Jews can live in Palestine. All uh -huh. the army's got to do is withdraw. Now, mm -hmm. that's what he has proposed and on January 1 of 2010, in Haaretz newspaper, a Jew wrote an entire article saying, this is what we should do. This is the way to solve this problem. They are going to do it. And it appears Netanyahu is now willing to do it. They are going to do it, and that's going to set the stage for what Jesus said. When you see the abomination of desolation, if you live out there in Judea, you better run for your life because there's going to be slaughter at that time. Wow. Well, let me, ask, let me whoa, add. Whoa, 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 I... whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You <laughs> lost me there for a second. Uh... The abomination of desolations cannot occur, though, you said, until the temple is rebuilt and the Antichrist is obviously at that point revealed and goes in and offers a, a type. Remember, uh, I was taught back in my Bible school days that uh, in the time of the Maccabees that Antiochus Epiphanes went in and slaughtered a pig on the altar of the then temple. Uh, I think Josephus says that the fulfillment of the abomination was that. However, it can't be because Matthew writes, he that readeth, let him understand. Mm -hmm. Now, abomination, when it's used in the Torah or it's used by the prophets, almost inevitably is idolatry, which was Israel's mm -hmm. main sin. The abomination in Revelation 13, when the false prophet makes the image of the beast, and the word there is actually icon, and he does something that only God could do. God, re God actually created a man from dust and made an object live that he created. This will be 2 Thessalonians 2, false wonders and signs that would deceive people. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 24, Christ warned about the false prophets and so on. But when the false prophet of Revelation 13 builds the image of the beast and makes it speak and live, demanding people to worship it, no Jew who is a devout Jew would ever worship an image. No. This is the reason why in the temple, in both Solomon and Herod's temple, you could never put a picture or a painting or a carving of a face of a person or an animal because God said this could lead to idolatry. Even the high priest, when he went into the Holy of Holies, took the gold off because of the golden calf, that there would be no temptation for that area. So the abomination that makes Jerusalem desolate would be Revelation chapter 13 when the image is built demanding worship and those who do not worship should be killed. Revelation 20 by beheading, which again is an Islamic way, as you know, of slaughtering people mm -hmm. under certain conditions. So that's where you, you tie the temple in with the abomination because in Daniel it says on the wing of the temple, is how it reads in Hebrew, it talks about the wing of the temple, the corner of the pinnacle, the corner of the temple uh, is, the, is the abomination that happens in the middle of the week, which is the middle of the seven years, which ties in perfectly with Revelation 13, which is in the middle of that time frame where those events take place. Okay. I've got to say one more thing, Paul. Okay. That's Go really ahead. important. Go ahead. <clears throat> when Mahmoud Abbas went to the United Nations on September the 23rd right. to declare, a, to ask them to recognize Palestine as mm -hmm. a state, yes. he put two conditions. Number one, we must have pre-1967 borders, which means we must have Judea. Yeah. Number two, he said, we must have East Jerusalem as our capital, which means that we must have the Temple Mount. Right. Mm. So the two things that Jesus said in Matthew 24, the abomination of desolation is going to happen on the Temple Mount, and those in Judea are going to have to flee. Those are the two conditions mm. that mm -hmm. Mahmoud Abbas requested for the world government. Fascinating. Ooh, ooh. And Jesus said, when you see those two things, then know that this generation shall not pass until everything is fulfilled.